You put the lime in the coconut, mix it all up. You put the lime in the coconut. Oh, look, that's already got a plate on it. Where did that come from? Can you see it? Can you, can you see it? Let's see, how do we want to frame? I'm usually not trying to pose with a C stand. That's normal. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. So if you're into that, you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And today I'm addressing one of the most frequently asked questions I get over on social media, especially during my Instagram stories when I'm showing y'all what's going on here in the studio. People are like, what is this contraption that you have mounted your camera to? How does this work? What do I need to buy? What are the parts and pieces? All the questions. So what I'm going to do today is walk through how I use it here in my studio, how I get this camera mounted overhead and get those delicious overhead food shots. So if that sounds good to you, you stick around. And of course, as always, everything that I will refer to in this video is linked down in the description box below. So this right here, my friend, is my C stand. Now, why from a technical standpoint is it called a C stand? I mean, it doesn't look like a C, but I have no idea why. And so if you're ever on a set though, and you see one, you say, that's a great C stand. You can sound super legit and knowledgeable because you got the lingo down. But generally, any kind of C-stand, of course, there are plenty of different makes and models and different manufacturers, but generally the idea is that you have this center column and then it is mounted on some sort of base. In this situation, this is a tripod base. And then I also have this arm, which then can move with these various grips that are attached to it. Now, what do you use a C-stand for? Well, you see me use it here in the studio for mounting my camera for the overhead position. But literally, this is the Swiss Army knife of the studio because you can mount all sorts of lights and gear, backdrops. I've seen people mount scrims, black cards, white cards. There's really no end to the possibilities of what these guys can do. And I really enjoy having one in my studio. So that's generally what will come in a package when you order just the C-Stand by itself. And so then you have to add on all the cart, all the little bits and bobbles and pieces in order to mount whatever it is that you're mounting to your C-Stand. So then as far as mounting the camera to the C-Stand, and to be honest, there are so many different ways to do this and there is no right way or wrong. I mean, maybe there's probably a wrong way. Way. The wrong way would be mounting it in a way that is unstable and that you could potentially damage your camera, but hopefully you won't go down that road. But for me, this is how I personally do it. And this is based on contacting the folks over at B&H. They're not sponsoring this or anything. It's just it's kind of one of the go-to sources. I send all my money to B&H. They just take all my money, send me photography equipment. It's how it works. Uh, but they recommended a couple parts to me when I was like, okay, what is like the best optimal way, given the scenario, what I'm planning to do with it, what should I buy? And so you can call their customer service line. I'll go ahead and include it here down below and give them a call, see what's going to work best for you and your camera and your setup and what you're looking to do. But what they recommended was this little adapter right here and how this works, how this attaches to the camera is we go ahead and we take the arm right over here. Okay. And you take the adapter and this is, I believe a five eighths inch opening. So we can go ahead and thread that on right here. Mm, gotta make sure to unscrew it. <laughs> There we go. And you put that here. I usually put it right down at the end. I'll show you why in just a moment. But we go ahead and stick that there. And then you wanna make sure to have a head that then mounts to your camera, right? This is the same as how it works with a tripod. And this actually takes the same exact plates as the tripod that I personally own, my Manfrotto. So if you look at the plate, that is on the bottom of your camera, that this works to mount my camera onto the tripod, but then it also mounts right here on this guy. There we go, right? So then all I have to do is attach this to this. It's a little tricky screwing all these things on. This is why this is always just set up. I don't ever have to monkey with it. There we go. And it is in that fixed position. So then I can take my camera with the plate. And what's great is if I'm, say, for example, on the tripod shooting some sort of head on shot and I'm like, okay, now I want to switch to overhead, unclick it here. I don't have to screw in anything additional. I don't have to do any monkeying around. I literally just click it in. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to, it's easy. I promise it's easy. Make sure everything's securely fastened. Get rid of the strap. 
get right up <laughs> strap and then voila you have your camera mounted to the stand now you're like why did you put it all the way out at the end couldn't we have put it a little further down this bar and you could but there's actually this cute little turny thing on the head that allows then this to rotate this way so say for example i'm shooting it like this and i'm getting a landscape orientation for my image i've got a flat lay right here and then suddenly i'm like okay now i want to swap over to a vertical orientation that i can just swap it super easily like that. So for me, it's all about the least amount of movements that I have to make in order to get the kind of shots that I want here in the studio. Now, one thing that's important, especially when you are mounting a camera to a C-stand or anything that is expensive, <laughs> you don't want it to go toppling to the ground. So you do want to make sure to pay attention, first of all, to the legs that are on your base. There is generally one that is longer. And so if in this case, I move it so that the long leg is pointing out toward the camera just because that's going to afford us a lot more leverage and stability so that this is not i mean i'm pull, i'm pulling very hard on this and it is not going anywhere now i'm sure there are plenty of people who are now watching this and saying but joni you don't have a sandbag i know i just I don't need, I've never found the need for a sandbag. Now, plenty of photographers, and I'm not saying you shouldn't use one, but plenty of photographers will recommend then also including a sandbag. You can just kind of throw it saddle horse style right here over the middle so that it'll really then anchor this down even further. But I find that this is a really heavy duty C-stand and I've not experienced any issues with any shakiness or anything falling over. But again, that's me personally. So if you want sandbags, I have linked some sandbags down below. So then the other question is, well, why would you go with this versus then a tripod with an articulating arm? And there are definitely some amazing tripods with articulating arms. It is definitely a great way to go. Definitely stores a lot easier because as you can see, this is a very large piece of equipment. If you are shooting in your kitchen, this is not something you can just like stash in a cupboard or fold up like it is pretty substantial. So you just gotta be kind of like aware of that. But for me, the real advantage with the C-Stand, of course, is it is a heavy duty piece of equipment. So I'm not worried about things falling over or teetering or kind of, you know, being very precarious. This is a really solid piece of equipment. But the real magic is that you can go ahead and release this little piece here and ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> hike this thing to the sky. Now, I don't usually take it up that high, but clearly I can take this thing all the way to the ceiling if I want. You know, say for example, you're like, oh, I really want to use the 100 millimeter macro to do an overhead shot, which this has happened to me before. And then that means you have to get really far away from the work surface, right? Because that is a longer focal length. So you're getting less in the scene. So you might want to really hike that thing up just to see more of the space. Well, this, you can go sky high. I mean, knock yourself out. I have never, granted these aren't super high ceilings, but I've never maxed out the ceilings before here in this situation. But the real problem that I ran into frequently when it came to using a tripod with an articulating arm for overhead shots was that it always had to be like on the work surface. So maybe it was like jimmying it on some sort of table or I was doing my flat lays on the floor that I felt really kind of limited. And two, I inevitably ran into situations where the legs were then interfering with the scene in some sort of way that I just couldn't get like far enough away. So this this just to me provides all that extra flexibility so that this can always be on the floor. I can be working on the countertop. I can hoist it up. I can really get it out there that I've just got that greater degree of flexibility. So that's why I really like a C-stand. So I think that pretty much covers everything. Now, of course, if you have any questions or I missed anything, you've got the comment section below. I will keep an eyeball on that. But I just want to make sure you know that this is not a required piece of equipment to being a professional food photographer. This is definitely something that helps. It is something that I I like using for my personal workflow and style and how I do things around here. But if you don't have the budget for it or you don't have the space for it, or for heaven's sakes, if you like shooting freehand, then don't let me stop you. That is fantastic. And really what's most vital to becoming a photographer? Well, creativity and a camera. That's it. That's all you need is you and the camera. So with that, thank you so much for stopping by the studio. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Feel free to tag me in your pictures over on Instagram. I always love to see what you guys are up to. And with that, have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I will see you again here real soon. All right. Bye. Now, of course, it also doubles as workout equipment. You just so the most important thing to know about the C-stand, fingers do not go in here <laughs> and they go, oh! Don't do it! <laughs> no, seriously, these things will hurt. I mean, you've not done that. No, of course not. <laughs>